Since the peak of film noir in the 50s to the blockbuster hits of today, disassociative identity disorder has been a popular theme amongst thriller and horror films. We begin in 1960, when Psycho, arguably one of the most popularized films in pop culture, was released, moving on to fan favorites like Fight Club and even thrillers like Split. Whether it be a mother altar that preys on young women, cult heroes that want to take down the capitalist establishment, or characters that kidnap and psychologically torture young girls, DID is sensationalized and stigmatized all over Hollywood. But what is DID, and how much of what Hollywood says is actually the truth? Disassociative Identity Disorder, or DID for short, is a mental disorder where an individual has at least two distinct reoccurring identity or personality states, sometimes called alters. These alters manifest alternatively and reoccurringly in an individual's behavior. These alters can differ in name, perceived age, gender identity, sexuality, memory, skill, ability, and interpretation of the world. After an episode of an alternative personality state, an individual with DID can exhibit significant memory impairment. Contrary to popular belief, DID is not an overexpression of separate personalities, but the disorder itself is defined by fragmentation of a single identity. DID is the inability to combine different parts of identity, memory, and consciousness into a single identity. DID was previously known as multiple personality disorder. Here are some misconceptions about DID that we can clear up. First, DID is not associated with schizophrenia. While both are prone to hearing voices in their internal monologues, individuals with DID are usually hearing their personality states. DID is also not associated with bipolar disorders. Second, DID cannot form in individuals with a fully unified personality, such as the average adult. Chronic childhood trauma can disrupt normal personality development and can thereby cause DID. Within Canada, US, and Europe, it is reported that 90% of individuals with DID experience childhood abuse. And third, some alters do acknowledge the existence of each other in the same individual, while some do not. So what is the physiology behind DID? Due to relatively low prevalence in the general population, there aren't a lot of studies on the physiology of DID individuals. However, there have been notable studies done in the 1980s which show different physiological states between personalities or alters, specifically in vision, audition, memory, and seizure-like activity. The general consensus is that alters are complex, distinct physiological states. While there were some changes in brain activity and blood flow, the main difference that has been replicated across studies is in evoked potentials. These are highly significant differences in the brain's average response to light stimuli in DID individuals between alters. Also, visual processes differ between alters, including acuity, eye muscle balance, and visual fields. Just like separate individuals, alters have unique EP and vision profiles. The gold standard for diagnosing the trauma-related disorders is the clinical interview. According to the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Disassociations, the two diagnostic survey tools used for DID are the DDIS and the SDQ20 and 5. So before we continue, it is important to note that DID is usually diagnosed on a case-by-case -case method and certain symptoms can be unique to certain patients. Majority of the research that is done is usually done through individual case studies. So one particular case study was found in Korea, researched by Dr. Kim and his colleagues. Through the SCID method, the individual was diagnosed with DID after presenting several symptoms. So a 20-year-old patient was admitted to the Korea military hospital after violent episodic behavior towards his fellow soldiers. Prior to moving abroad, the patient was shy and timid. However, upon his returns, his parents described confidence that was not there before. He also showed symptoms of amnesia, depersonalization, derealization, identity confusion, and identity alteration as well. During his time in the military, the patient showed bizarre and changing behaviors. Several times, the patient spoke in English, though Korean was his native language. The patient was forgetful of his actions as well. There was also an incident where the patient violently lashed on a fellow soldier. Once admitted to the psychiatric ward, seven alters were found. Three of the patient's alters included the main host, who was shy and timid, John, an arrogant English speaker, and Cho, who appeared to have known the other alters as well, and was described as a storyteller for the other alters to the researchers. In films like Fight Club, alters are often portrayed as separate individuals conversing with each other. Generally, people with DID cannot communicate with their alters, and only one alter can appear during a single time. We know that Cho knew the other alters. However, we also know that Cho was unable to communicate and have conversations with the other alters. Unlike Fight Club, which portrays a hyperbolic view of DID, which is not seen in our case study. 
We also know that the patient was able to write with his left hand. According to his parents, he was right-handed. In the film, Tyler Durden also gained new skills, specifically his skills in fighting, his newfound confidence, and his leadership abilities as well. This is seen in our case study as well, where the patient also became more confident as he became his altered John. So, now we move on to lifestyle and treatment. Many folks with DID are able to live successful lives without the need for medical treatment or therapy. Those who may find it challenging to cope with their symptoms are able to seek a treatment. For DID, personalized treatments have been found to be the most effective. For example, individualized therapy that is tailored to the individual's personal needs. So the goal of therapy is to reassociate and reintegrate the person's sense of self. Integration is the acceptance and ownership of all thoughts, feelings, fears, beliefs, experiences, and memories as one unified self. While it may be challenging for an individual to accept all disassociations as part of a whole human being, it can be a strong step in trauma recovery. So, by creating a safe environment, an individual living with DID may feel safe to disclose their experiences. Since many individuals with DID have experienced childhood trauma, assuring them that this is a safe space where no one will hurt them has been an essential stepping stone for treatment. Treatment should be shaped to meet an individual's specific need at a given time. For example, during times of frequent disassociations or severe anxiety and depression, crisis interventions and coping strategies can prove most useful. During times of mild symptoms, self-reflection can be a useful tool to integrate. While medications can be an effective tool in treating some mental disorders, no medication is found to specifically reduce disassociations. Medications are sometimes prescribed to reduce anxiety or depression, but more research is needed to build a better understanding of the drug pathway and their potential impacts on folks with DID. To conclude, films such as Psycho and Fight Club tend to hyperbolize DID by villainizing many of the characters. So will a person with DID become a leader of a cult to take down capitalist America? Or will they become psychopathic killers when they take on differing alters? Probably not. In the real world, DID is a disorder individuals are living with every day while coping well and leading fulfilling lives. Thank you for watching. This has been brought to you by McMaster University's Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.